Aloha all. This is Samana with Unconventional Insights. This is my 25th podcast and we're doing this on self-love, the greatest gift of all. So I was aware that I did not talk about the full moon last week. How did everyone handle that full moon in Gemini since I always bring up a little bit of astrology? I was a bit preoccupied to mention it. And the full moon is quite significant regardless if you live in reference to the moon or not. We are affected because we are earthlings on this planet. And what the full moon does is basically it lights up the areas of our life that previously are dark or have been shadow aspects. So for the next 30 days, it gives us this little like flashlight of intensity, sometimes uncomfortable, hopefully always insightful. And this Gemini moon my sister being a Gemini. I have many Geminis I know and love out there. But Gemini is always about communication. So for all of us, this is going to affect us on the level of communication for the next 30 days. This is how we're kind of ending this year of 2019. There's so much going on in the government and Washington and just the world and oh my goodness, so much. Anyway, so it's kind of auspicious that we have this communication, this Gemini full moon, which always happens at this time uh, at the end of every year. So now the other thing that's happening out there, which I have to bring this up because I don't allow these things to, to limit me. I don't put people in a box with astrology. I've just always used astrology as a reference point to see kind of the energies that are in conflict or in harmony, and I just notice how it affects my life instead of going against it. It kind of gives me uh, insight into patterns and various things. And again, they've been using astrology following the stars since the, what, 500 AD. Like it's, it's big. It's been around forever. So this isn't something new. So right now there's considered a conjunction, which everything is on top of each other, of three planets Venus, Saturn, and Pluto. So a quick overview for you not so into astrology people. Venus is it rules love and relationships and what we value. Saturn is about our fears or our foundations, depending on how conscious you are. And then Pluto, my favorite power-packed planet, and the ruler of my rising, my Neptune, and my Venus is in this conjunction. And Pluto comes along and ignites destruction or total transformation. How about that? Go big or go home. I love Pluto. So again, how you vibrate and how conscious you are will determine how this energy manifests in your life. So, summarizing, the lowest expression of this full moon lighting up and these conjunct planets happening for the next couple of weeks is, the lowest expression is devastation of relationships and material possessions due to overwhelming fears steering us in the wrong direction. So we're allowing our fears to guide us and prevent us from moving forward. Or our relationships and finances are strengthening and becoming more concrete, supportive, and foundational while totally transforming all we have previously known as we see it all in its intense glory and extreme details it manifests itself to us how about that I'd much prefer going with that second one I'm ready and this particular conjunction of these planets have not 
happened for a long time. I should have this down. Is it 20, 30, 50 years? Who cares? But it's been a long, it's not a common occurrence. So I say, take advantage of it. That's that Pluto ruled part of me is like I said, go big or go home. Take advantage. When there is an opportunity for something to show, give yourself moments to reflect, give yourself time alone so that you can uh, go inside and see, does that ring true to you? How does that apply to you? Uh, what is a shadow part that you could be looking at to bring a little attention to or an, an awareness to? Because our shadows or our fears are basically they run us. It's that unconscious tape that runs our behavior that we're not always so proud of. So if we could bring light to it, awareness to it, insight to it, it will no longer run us and we can be the people that we strive to be. So how does all of this apply to self-love? Well, be it if you're single or in a relationship, it's time to up your game in relationship to yourself and how it feels to just be fully in your body, accepting of who you are and what at home, just to feel at home. An exercise I would like to offer, regardless if you're single or in relationship, your partner could do this too, but do this in a different room. Don't do this together. I want you to really <clears throat> be present for this. Stand naked in front of a mirror. Take a few deep conscious breaths, cleansing breaths. That's our That's our rebooting breath, our inhale and exhale. And look at yourself. And just look and notice the thoughts. And starting at the top of your head, say out loud words of appreciation. For example, I'm grateful for my hair. It's long and luscious and full and I don't have to dye it. I'm grateful for my sharp mind and quick cognitive ability. I'm grateful for my skin, for my blue eyes, my beautiful lips, my white teeth, my long, elegant neck. It goes on and on. Even if you have a negative body issue, image, and we all do to a point and to various degrees, even if it's that, I want you to really take this exercise seriously and regardless of if you're feeling it or not, if it feels like it's a lie, I want you to only say it out loud in positive reflections about your appearance. And be as detailed as possible. And remember to say this out loud. I don't care if it feels awkward. There is no one in there. Maybe your dog or cat. So just do this. This is a form of process that reinforces our beliefs and reprograms the mind. We need to be in chart. We need to bring consciousness to our mind, remember, to cultivate it. When you're done, do one final look and thank yourself for your strength, for all you've survived up to this point, for all you will meet in the future. You are perfect and you will continue showing up in each moment to the best of your ability. That's all we can ask for is bringing compassion and tenderness to all of our fears, our failures, our not knowing, our incessant review of doing the same damn pattern over and over again until we finally... Get all the information and every last drop of juice we can out of whatever we've been involved with, usually for a lifetime. But it's then and only then that we're free to move on. Do not beat yourself up. Do not be condemning for not acting in your highest manner. Just say to yourself, next time... I will show up a bit more authentically. How about if we start that as, as a, uh, a goal for an inner talk, a beautiful inner talk? Next time, I will show up a bit more authentically instead of, why did I do that? Why didn't I say what I meant? Why is this happening again? 
next time I'll show up a bit more authentically. And eventually, you're acting and being exactly who you are meant to be, a conscious, highly functioning, multi-dimensional, extremely kick-ass, exceptional being with specific needs and wants. And this path is about staying alert to identify the moment these new needs arise and then to discover how to get our needs met. That's self-love. That's the path. That's the highest path we can have, regardless of if we're a financial advisor, if we are an esthetician, if we are a, a nurse out there, if we are in sales, whatever it is, we need to have this conscious relationship, this self-love, this know thyself first. That's who we are first. We're not here to be born to make money. We are here to see the extreme moments of ever-changing impermanence of awareness of, of ourselves and then our relationship to everyone around us and everything around us. And the whole world changes because our views change, because our awareness shifts, because it expands. Okay, let's do another exercise together. So this is a type of guided meditation. Again, I'm always offering you tools. This is for free. So these, this guided meditation is called Smiling into Our Inner Organs. Montak Chia is a brilliant Taiwanese master. Any of you that have taken classes from me, especially if when I do Eastern skin analysis and various things like that, I'm going to mention him. In the beginning of my programs, I'd always give a, a chart from his Cheney Tang book that would talk about how all the different five elements and the, the animal, the spirit animals, and it just goes on and on how it's broken down and the processes of the body. Anyways, he is, a, is an energy master, and he was one of my foundational teachers this lifetime from the 80s. I've read every book he's written. So we're going to do this. So sit somewhere. Don't do this while you're driving. So if you are driving, you could do this when you get home. <sighs> Take a little cleansing breath. <sighs> Close your eyes and with a slight half smile on your lips. So the corners of your mouth are turned upwards. Take a few breaths and I want you with that smile to smile into each of your internal organs. This is said, when they've done studies with this, that it actually energizes those organs, energizes the body, that there is such a power, powerful impact on us physically, emotionally, physiologically, just with an authentic smile. So even if you're not feeling that smile, do it anyways that little half smile, and beginning with your brain, smile into your brain, take a moment and pause, smile into your throat, may you communicate well, may it be open and expansive, smile into your heart, may it be open, may it be expressive and safe, may it feel interconnected, and part of the universe, smile into your lungs as you breathe fully. Smile into your stomach and pancreas to the left of the body. May your stomach assimilate. May your pancreas work properly, balancing blood sugar. May there be ease and joy as we smile into that area. Over to the right side of the body, just under the rib cage, smile into the liver and gallbladder. Again, lots of anger and tension and frustration usually resides there, and we just want to bring that smile in there, that kindness, that gentleness, and heal our liver and gallbladder. Smile into the kidneys, so that's just where the waist bends, and it's in the back of the body, and the kidneys and adrenals, and that's our life force energy. So smile into there. That's where we hold fear versus trust. 
So let's just take a moment and smile in there and bring that expansiveness and that playfulness and that joy, that smile into our kidneys. Smiling into your colon, your small and large intestines, and it's nice and and pliable and movable and tone. Smile into the pelvis area of the ovaries or testes. Just bringing, smiling into the bladder. And then scan your body one time from head to toe with your inner smile. So the whole time having that little gentle smile. And notice if any areas need more attention. Pause in that area if you need to. Take a breath or two. And when you're complete, open your eyes and check in and see how you're feeling. So there are times when I'm having a challenging day and then I go to the store or something and you look up and you see a stranger just do this little smile at you. Or the car next to you, you're at a stoplight and you glance over and catch their expression and they just smile. When that happens to me, I just light up. I mean... To, uh, when a stranger offers you a smile or someone you know and love, you feel so good. It opens your heart. It warms you. So we are doing this for ourselves. This is a self-love tool. All of these exercises I share, they actually work. I've done counseling for so many years now. I've taught for so many years now. And I've done, I've walked this path. I've had to heal many things through all these little things, but you have to pick up the tool and use the right tool in the moment that you need it. So this is one of them. So you need to check in, allow time for comp contemplation, and see where and how you are in this moment. Throughout the day, I told one of my clients a couple of weeks ago, I said, because she was always so busy and she tends to not breathe and she tends to be hurried. And I have another client with high blood pressure. And I say, how about if you try to do one conscious breath a day? That means in the busyness of your day, for one moment, you go. <sighs> inhale, exhale, and then go on to your pace. And then what if you increase it to two conscious breaths a day and then do three conscious breaths a day and then notice every time you're not breathing and just take that cleansing breath and reboot and just see what starts to happen. See if life becomes more enjoyable and more pleasurable, if it's more fulfilling because you're not just tasking you're actually checking in with yourself and asking the question, how is Samana doing today? What is my experience of this moment? How am I feeling? How am I perceiving this moment? Let me check in. Instead of looking for our partners, our parents, our our priests, our teachers, our best friends, our kids, to do this, what if we do this ourselves and really sustain ourselves, really like have so much excess love that it just overflows, the cup overflows. Okay, so here's your little Christmas self-love exercise. So if you're single, you could do this if you're single or in a relationship, so it doesn't matter, but you're going to do this on your own. Plan the perfect date and if you're single, you could imagine who that would be with, the love of your life, and have the details of this date. Make it plausible. Don't make it, I'm going to Egypt to see the pyramids, unless you can afford to do that right now. So do something that would be a date that if someone you met or with your partner said, this is the date we're doing in detail, you would feel so much love. You would feel so satiated. So plan your date, write it out, and do this by yourself, I recommend. Or if you have to, bring a friend. Although I hugely recommend doing it alone because then 
you can revel in each moment. You could bring new experiences to yourself. If you want, bring a journal with you and you could stop periodically and write your insights, write how you're feeling. Even if I feel awkward or I feel people are looking at me or this is, I feel lonely doing this, write everything down and then just see what the whole date is like. Because I guarantee you're not going to feel that way for long because if this truly is the perfect date for you, but you're wasting the time spinning in your mind about what you don't have, I hope that you don't waste time. I would rather you just really do this exercise. And if you're in a relationship, share, do this perfect date by yourself, and your partner could do it too if they're open to it. And then you find a time that you get together and see if they would be down to doing this and then sharing your experience. So the assignment is to design a date that you would love to have done with your partner. Now in relationships forever, I have told couples for them to design a date that they think would be what their partner would like most. And then that gives the partner, oh, you really notice me, you really get me, you pay attention, thank you. Or if they totally blow it, then you get more insight and your partner can say, okay, maybe I wasn't clear enough. Maybe I didn't share my wants enough. So it's not just that your partner's unconscious. I want you to know that. It could be that how expressive are you? How authentic are you at sharing what you really want? So it's not always that they don't know you. It might be that you're not showing up. So either way, but now I want you to pick a time where you share what your personal ideal date was and your experiences. You could share what you wrote down in your journal or however that was. And what's happening is, is that you're going to find out a couple of things. So often one or both of you do not share your deepest desires. I guarantee that. And I'll tell you, life is too short and you are missing out. You are not too much. You are not too intense. You're not weird, freaky, not good enough, etc. Whatever your mind can come up with as an excuse, you're none of those. What you are, my dear, I guarantee is perhaps not showing up fully for the stage of your life, regardless if you're single or in partnership. And it's time. And if your truth, living your truth, scares someone off, then bless them for no longer wasting your time. Because, honey, one of the greatest pains on this planet is neglecting ourselves by hiding, pretending, lying, accommodating, uh, backing down because of fear. So be fearless. Challenge yourself to dig as deep as you've ever gone and see who's in there. Be curious. What is your fullest potential? How does it feel? To even consider living more authentically, showing up more than you ever have. What does that mean first? How would that look? How would that feel to you and how would it look to others? What would change in your life if you fully showed up? And I'm not saying a narcissist that it's all about me. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm saying checking in throughout the day to see, are your needs getting met? Not your wants, not your little infantile, this is how I'm going to do it, dictator way. I'm talking about your, your needs, your love, what sustains you, what fills you, what nourishes you, all of that, and showing up so that you can say, this doesn't work for me. This is what I want. I want to share this with you. I've been afraid to say this. So it will be like what this will do if you start showing up more authentically. It's going to be like you're walking around with these powerful magnets strapped all over your body. 
think of it in those terms. And what it's going to do is it's going to, as you walk through life, it will instantly repel anyone and anything that's not aligned with your truth. And it will instantly and powerfully attract and draw in all people and circumstances that are in tune with who you are. So, for the holidays this year, do something bold. Have a love affair with yourself. I guarantee, even if you're in a relationship and you listen to this podcast and do some of these exercises and bring this to your partner, after you're that filled without any compromise, all of my needs were met because I met them. And now I come to my partner you will be juicy, you will be happy, you will have an overabundance of tolerance and joy and love and spaciousness and ability to meet their needs and anything that's happening in the moment and they will think you are a brand new person. And how about that for a gift to bring to your partner? So this personal love affair, it's impossible to feel disappointment or to be off in timing if you are in charge of the whole scenario. So do something extraordinary and new. If it's new for you to go and eat a meal by yourself, maybe in your favorite restaurant and dress up or take a walk or a hike in a place that you love or that you've always wanted to explore, go to a movie by yourself Take a class, an art class, painting, movement, yoga, a meditation class, a cooking class, a shooting class, whatever floats your boat. There is so many things out there. And again, that newness, this is incredible. And then if you are in a relationship new or you've been with someone for a long time, when you come together, I want you to share all of the feelings and the experiences you had with your partner from this perfect date you went on and that vulnerability that you allow to come through and then share with your partner is going to bring you a greater closeness and more understanding between you. So on your part, by sharing openly they feel that you're letting them into a deeper place. Often I have clients in relationships that are not fulfilling and they say their partner's unavailable or things like that. And often when someone says repeatedly their partners are unavailable, I ask them what part of you is unavailable because we mirror and we draw in and like attracts like. So even if they believe they're open and wonderful and I do everything for everyone in my life and I'm totally available, but are you vulnerable? Are you raw? Are you authentic? Do you share what scares you? Do you share what you're not so powerfully comfortable with? Do you share um, that you need support, that I just want to be held, that can you come over and just snuggle with me? Can you take a moment and hold my hand? Can we just sit quiet together? All of that is vulnerable. I'm scared. I don't often feel worthy. I'm not certain why you love me. Um, there are times I don't love myself. All of that is real and raw. And all of that, if someone is worthy of you, if someone is meant to be in your life and you share like that, they are going to stay and they are going to want to fill that part of your heart that you newly opened as you shared that vulnerability. I know what I'm talking about. I walk my talk. Trust me. So in sharing this perfect date, what it does for your partner is your partner gets to participate by listening deeply to you with sincere interest they could give feedback. 
you could say, do you want feedback as you're listening? And you could comment and question as the partner. Be curious about this new adventure your partner shared. Be happy for them. Always be happy in our relationships for anything new and exciting that lights up our relationships, that lights up our partners, that lights up anyone, our friends, anyone in life, any good news that makes them happy. Don't be harboring or fearful or wanting to control them or wishing you were part of it. Be happy for them as a soul. We're born alone and we die alone. This time called life is meant to share. I heard that at 16 and never forgot that. That's the truth. So be joyous, be happy for your partner, for yourself. If you just have yourself, share it with your dog, share it with your cat, share it with yourself while journaling, while looking in the mirror, share it out loud. Just be happy for these new insights and ideas that you have every day. And I'm basically, my life mission in, in the world, my whole life purpose is, as I've said this, hopefully I've said this before, is I, my way of healing the planet is to heal people one person at a time. I heal the planet by healing one person at a time. That's my whole thing. So I offer these insights through the podcast, through my counseling. So any of you that need more one-on-one -on -one time, my, again, my insight counseling is $100 a session. We could do it via um, online, or you could, if you're in South Austin, come here. I also do rooms on booking.com if you want to come to Austin and meet me or explore this incredible city. I'm Aloha in Texas. And I also offer $100 for one session or two for $150. This is the season for giving. If there's anyone out there that you know of that can use a little insight, a little one-on-one -on -one focus, I tend to draw people that have never gone to a counselor before because it's why I call my podcast Unconventional Insights because I don't come from a book or from judgment. There is nothing anyone could say to me that I would judge you or make you feel bad about yourself or make you feel wrong. I am just compassionately, I know that it's hard being human. We do our best and I will see from listening to you what you're sharing with me and I will give you the greatest direction to make your life fulfilling and to to bring always when someone starts a session with me, they're heavy and sad and crying and despair and guaranteed when they are done, by the end of our hour, there is a lightness, there is a spaciousness, they have a purpose, they have a direction, they are breathing, they are happy. And that's what I love. I love my gifts. I'm grateful for my gifts. I'm grateful for all of you for your listening to my podcast and any of you that share my podcast. I have over a thousand followers now. I just found out I was so excited and I've only been doing this since August. So I'm so proud. And some from other countries, from England and places in Europe and Canada. And I'm so proud of that. So my plug on a couple of my workshops that I'm doing. So I do have a microneedling, nanoneedling workshop I'm doing January 13th for $250 in Haiku, Maui at the Temple of Peace. I need a deposit, half of that $125 of the $250 to hold your spot so you could Venmo me. There's only three spots left, I believe. And I talked to one of my past students today, so there may not even be that many spots. In February, the fabulous David Garrison and myself are doing our second relationship workshop, Be a Relationship Architect, guaranteed to transform your life. So if this is something that you've been stuck in the same patterns in relationship or that you have resentment or baggage or you just can't heal from a long time ago relationship or a current relationship or your questions are, why does this keep happening to me? Or you're in a relationship that it's changing phases and you're seeing that, wait, we just don't connect like we used to. It's not as spicy as it was. You know, we're just kind of living together and we need a little help. Or 
I've often had people that have come to me that are on the verge of let's just break up. And I guarantee with the right tools, I have had many couples not break up after counseling with me or doing a workshop such as this one because you're given the tools of how to handle these tasks. There's no such thing as the perfect relationship. What it is is the commitment by two people that we will do whatever it takes with whatever tools we can gather to bring harmony, to bring uh, a, a meeting of two beings so both of our needs are met at all times in this relationship. That's what I believe relationship is. So that one is going to be February 8th and 9th. It's an intensive. It's from 10 to 5. It's $300 a person. I do need a $150 deposit to hold that space. We're only taking 10 people or two people for 500 So a couple could come or two friends could join. And again, I have rooms that will be discounted if you come. And finally, we're going to start talking soon about talking about self-love is consider my 30-day detox, spiritual reboot. So that works on physical, mental, emotional detox. You're all going to do my cleanse. So we, we have it in a couple different fashions. So in South Austin, we're going to be doing that out of my home. I'm taking six people on Thursday night, starting the end of January. And that is $300. Or you could do this one-on-one -on -one online if you're not in Austin or if you don't have time to come to my home and this will be four weeks of two-hour classes that I will be instructing you as you're going through this cleanse and you have a hundred percent one-on-one support with me and for any of you in the health and wellness so massage therapists aestheticians life coaches um uh, personal trainers, nurses, all of that. I do a total client renovation certification program where I will help whatever areas you are weak in on those areas. I will help strengthen you and teach you how to work with your clients. And that's $500 right now. And in February, I'm starting a seven day transformational retreat, one-on-one -on -one customized. You come to my home and we have a schedule each day where we're going to do movement, meditation. I'm going to teach you how to cook. I'm going to put you on this cleanse for the whole week so and give you supplements. And by the time you leave, you're going to have this down so you could continue for the next three weeks. And you can check in with me once a week. And that is, I'll take you to the gym. We'll do a workout program. We'll do yoga. We'll do infrared saunas. We'll do personal counseling sessions. We're going to do classes. It's going to be so much. And you'll have a little bit of free time in Austin. Unfortunately, you can't enjoy the tacos, though, because you'll be on a cleanse. But that, all of that is on my website. So if you're the type of person, because I only take one to three people for that in a week. So it could just be you for the week. And on my website, spaluna, S-P-A-L-U-N-A dot com, it will give you that seven day transformational retreat information or about the certification or the 30 day detox. And you could also call me at 808-283-7587. I have loved this time with you, and I hope the holidays are doing right, and be joyous, journal, and aloha.